So here I have now logged in into my SAP system and I'm going to pull up our ABAP dictionary using the transaction code SE11. Okay, so let me go to transaction code SE11. Okay, so um, this is our ABAP dictionary initial screen. And if you notice the first in the first assignment, right, the first thing that we have to create is a domain. Now, uh, some of you must be wondering what is the difference between a data element and a domain and why we need to create a data element and domain. So the difference I've already explained and I've uploaded that video in our uh, group. I'll share the same video on the website also. So I will not explain the difference here, but what I will explain to you is the use of the term data dictionary object. So um, see uh, objects like uh, database table, data types, domains, etc. Right? All these objects are known as data dictionary objects. And the reason why they are called such as is because these objects can stand on their own. That means uh, and they can be used as building blocks to create other objects. Meaning for example, the tables, data types, domains, etc. Right? They can be independently, independently defined and um, they can be used as building blocks to create other objects. Whereas fields and the data in the table, right, that cannot stand on its own, meaning uh, the, the data needs to have a table to reside into, right? So if the table is not there, the fields and the, and the underlying data really does not have any existence. So that's, that means the objects that can stand on their own are known as data dictionary objects, okay? So now you know why um, tables, views, data types, domains, you know, um, uh, structures etc these are known as data dictionary objects i've also written a blog post on this and i'll share it with the group so do read it for more information okay so now moving along the next point uh, that i want to explain here is that each table in the r3 system right it is composed of several components um, and uh, the components of a table are basically the table object itself right which actually represents the table in the data dictionary then uh, a table is composed of several fields which define the uh, information that is stored in the table. The third is the, uh, the data elements, right, which describe the field, con the field content and um, it determines how the field is displayed to the end user. The uh, also, the table is composed of a domain, right, which, which describes the valid values for the field. And uh, the domain specifies information like the data type, the number of positions in a field, etc. And finally, a table also has technical settings, meaning the technical settings specify how the R3 system is going to handle that table in the database. Okay, so we will see all this now uh, when I demonstrate. So um, since we have understood uh, the various components of a table, I will quickly go through the steps that you uh, usually take to define a table. To define a table, basically, first we define, of course, name the table. Number two, we will specify the fields for that table. Then we will uh, define the data elements and the domains for the, that that's, that are going to be used for the table. And then um, we will specify our technical settings for the table. And finally, we will activate our table. So uh, by these five steps, four or five steps, you will have a complete database table uh, ready ready to go for you. Okay. Okay. So now um, in our assignment, since we are uh, starting with creating a domain, so um, uh, let's start with creating a domain first. So here as per the specifications, right, I'm going to uh, demonstrate how to create a domain um, and then we will create a, uh, a data element and then finally we will create a table. Okay. All right. So the domain that I'm going to create is um, the first one is um, ZDO underscore room okay uh, and guys here a quick note about the naming convention so if if you're like if you're working in a project right in sap and uh, usually your company or the client company they will have their own naming conventions meaning um, naming conventions mean how you're going to name an object uh, in, in when you're creating it now, since uh, we, I want to keep this assignment series very simple and we want to concentrate more on our development aspect, hence um, I have kept the naming conventions very simple. Okay, so uh, so here if you if you notice the first character, as you know, obviously in SAP, uh, every first character should either start with a Z or a Z um, or a Y, right? And usually it is recommended to create test programs or sample programs as Y. 
and production programs or the actual programs programs that you're going to create with a z okay or a z so um, we will be using we will use z here and uh, thus the next two characters right uh, these are going to like as a thumb rule right these usually represent the object type so since i'm creating a domain so i'm so i'm uh, naming it as z z d o but if if i would have created a data element we would use d e and if i am creating a database table then i would create uh, use d t and so on okay so uh, this is followed by an underscore um, and then followed by a some um, some you know indicating meaning for the object or what the object stands for so that's why i have a name z d o underscore room because this is going to be a domain for the room id okay so now uh, once i have the name decided i'm going to cl click the create button here and that will bring us to the create domain screen okay now guys actually the first few assignments are pretty simple and straightforward and uh, how to create a domain i can explain to you in two minutes um, but the main focus in fact some of you may already be aware how to create uh, domains data elements so the main focus of this video is to explain to you the concepts behind this so here i'm going to explain to you how to create a domain and um, another thing is i don't have the assignments right in front of me right now so i'm going to use my own um, uh, data so here i'm going to give a short description id for room and um, in the data type i'm going to add um, i'm you going to use uh, the uh, data type character okay so um, in the assignments i think i have used numc but the problem with numc is that you can only add numeric data type in that uh, but later on i realized that you know rooms can be um, alpha numeric right you could have a1 a2 as room numbers um, they need necessarily not be numeric so i changed this to character 3 so if you have in your assignments if you have done uh, numc then and if you want to continue you can but if you want to change then you can uh, use character 3 okay so i'm going to use character 3 and in the output length also i want the output to be shown as three characters and one more thing which is important is the conversion routine now um, guys um, the see sometimes what happens is when you store a value into the system right you would want to store it um, like you won't want to remove some of the extra things and just store the data but when you're showing it to the end user you would want to show it in a better format you know um, in that case you would use a conversion routine here you would put five digits here and automatically sap would create a function model converge under conversion underscore exit underscore your five characters underscore output and similarly conversion underscore exit underscore five characters underscore input now um, point is uh, these are conversion routines they are required when you are storing the data um, and when you are showing our data but in this case because we are not um, because we are not showing our data uh, sorry we are not doing any conversion on the room id that's why we are not going to use these conversion routines okay another thing is sign of course uh, sign is basically in financial transactions like uh, you may want to store a negative symbol in front of dollar amounts right or oh, sorry in uh, uh, currency so in that case you would use a sign to show that uh, this is negative amount um, lower case is basically when you um, have to convert a value into a lower case or show it into a, sorry show it into the lower case for example employee's name or, or something like that then you would use lower case okay now next thing is value range in value range basically you provide a set of values to your domain so may, maybe if it is like a status field right and you would want to show um, a status like for example if you're using the domain to store the status of an approval then you you would say 10 is uh, approved 20 is uh, rejected 30 is in process 40 is completed something like that so those fixed values you could add here similarly intervals are basically uh, between 5 and 10 between 10 and 100 something like that you want to store then you can use the intervals and in our case we're just storing uh, a table just to show that the values for the room would come from the zt underscore room table and of course we haven't created the table yet but um, once we you know in the future assignments we're going to create the table also so right now we're just doing this um, and i'm going to activate uh, this thing 
and uh, package I am using uh, dollar temp because I uh, this is a local object basically uh, we are not going to assign a, a package to this and it says uh, the warning there are some warnings of course uh, let's see what those warnings are so you see it says uh, the value table zt underscore room does not exist and of course we already know that we are going to create it uh, in the future assignment so I'm going to back out from here and as you see now our domain is active okay so let me go back out okay so our domain is now done let's move on to create our data element using the domain that we created so I'm going to select data type and I'm going to uh, use the name zdte underscore room. Of course, I have gone through the naming conventions. Uh, this is data element room and uh, I'm going to hit the create button. So as soon as I hit the create button, right, the system tells me what sort of uh, uh, type you want to create. Do you want to create a data element? You want to create a structure or you want to create a table type? So I want to create a data element. That's why I'm selecting a data element. Um, but you know the difference between data element a data element is basically just a single um, value which a single entity which refers to the underlying domain a structure basically could be uh, a, um, could be a row of a table basically it's like a template it doesn't store any value it's just uh, represents a row in a table and a table type is basically it represents a t underlying table um, but it doesn't store any value so it's like a structure with a whole table okay so i'm going to create a table data element right now so i'm going to click this tick and uh, this brings me to the create data element screen so um, again i need to give a short description to my um, data element here and the domain that i'm going to use is uh, the one which we created earlier which is uh, zdo underscore room And um, the main thing here that to remember is our field labels. So I'm going to click on field labels. And uh, let's provide some field labels here. So five, this, basically this is how the, field, the data element uh, will be shown outside on the screen when the length of the screen is short and long. Okay, so oops, five. There is a kind of delay in, in my computer. So there I have added all my um, uh, short, uh, field labels. Now I'm going to save this as a local object. And I'm going to activate this. So the object is now activated. So let's back out and uh, go to create our table. 